Hey guys, it's Agumas Tidermer again and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you again for joining today. I really appreciate your time. I also wanted to ask you if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet to please do so by just clicking on the button below and hitting subscribe because it's really going to help me in bringing you a lot more content. Today what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue the videos on navigation and pathfinding. We're going to be basically adding stairs to the nav mesh and regenerating by baking the nav mesh one more time. And I'm also going to be adding what's called an off mesh link that is going to allow us to tell our player to go from one location to another location where we'll have a gap between both of the platforms. Basically, it's going to jump from one source to the other. So let's jump into Unity and start looking at it. All right, guys, so let me show you what we're going to be doing today, which is to start looking at some of the components and options that we have in our agent. So this is a scene that I show you on the previous video. We have basically our source, which is our player and then our target. And when we hit play, the player also called the agent, it's going to go and reach our target. So what I want to do here is I want to create a new scene. I'm going to leave this one intact because I want you guys to test it out. If you want to look at it in GitHub, it's available in GitHub. And I'm going to put the link in the description of this video. And what I want to do is I want to do a couple of things. I want to add a couple of stairs that are going to be located right over here, right when the, you know, when the player starts walking. And then I'm also going to be adding an off ramp here that it's going to allow us to basically jump. And then it's going to get, you know, from the source to the target, the target it's going to be the goal that we're trying to reach. So let's go ahead and get started. So what I'm going to do is also, I want to mention that every time you create an AF mesh, it creates a folder just like this. So every scene that I'm going to be creating is going to be, it's going to have the same pattern. So I'm going to just go ahead and duplicate this and then double click this here. And then now I'm going to go into geometry because now I'm on a, on a different scene. And then I want to make sure that everything is cleared out. So I'm just going to go ahead and clear the, basically the whole mesh. And then I'm going to rebake it. And what that's going to do, it's going to basically create our own nav mesh that is assigned to the scene. We can go ahead and look at some other options in the future for, you know, going from one scene to another. And then also the different options that we have with that. So what I want to start with is if we go into geometry, we're going to be adding a couple more things here. So I'm going to just go ahead and duplicate this. And then I'm just going to put it right over here. And I'm going to add something that looks like a basically like stairs, but I don't want them to be as big. So I'm going to do it maybe if this is 100% of the player and we go into ISO. Let's go ahead and go ahead and there we go. So that you get an idea. So say we go, you know, this is 100% from here to here. And then we can do probably so 50 is right here, 25 is right here. We can do about maybe 20% of the player. And then each step is going to be about that. And that's important because when we set up the basically the step high, it's important that we tell the system, you know, what the step high is going to be, because that's going to help us in determining what the steps are going to be and then how much the agent needs to climb in order to go through the steps. All right. So that's the first one. And let me go here. So what I'm going to do just to make this easy is I'm going to go ahead and do zero. Let's do 0 0.25. And then we're going to do increment. So here's the first step. And then let's just make it a little smaller. There we go. So here's the first step. And we can probably put it towards here. And then the second one is going to be double that size. So I'm just going to do 0.5. And then I'm going to hold V so that I can snap it to the vertices. And there we go. And then just going to do, let's just do two more. So this one is going to be, be 0.75. And I'm going to you know follow the same process. And I'm going to do, and you can do this with, you know, a, a more robust tool. You can use ProBuilder if you want to. I just want to keep it simple because this is more for navigation meshes than it is for actually creating, doing 3D modeling. All right. So I think, I think we're good there with the, with the steps. So I'm going to go ahead and call this one steps. So just call it, let's actually call it singular step because each of them is one step. All right. So now if we go ahead and, and select each one of those, let's go ahead and go into object. So these are going to be walkable. So we need to select them all. And then I'm going to make him walkable because we're going to be walk, walking on them. The other thing that I want to do, I'm going to do bake and I want to see what's going to happen. And you can see that, you know, as soon as I do that, the nav, the navigation mesh is going to get generated. It looks a little bit weird. So let's go ahead and hit play and see what happens. I don't think it's going to work unless we do one change. And it looks like it worked, but I think if we do, if we look at the agent, let's see. So here's the step height of the agent. So 
if we want to go I think we had a pretty high a step high so I think this is fine this determines you know what what a step is gonna be and how what the maximum value it's gonna be so if we go into if I go into bake I can also do the same thing here step high is gonna be so the step high is pretty high so let's do 0 0.25 and then do bake and then see what we get so I think I think that's fine what we're getting if we do if we do a little bit more and also know that if you go too high you're gonna see that this is gonna warn you and it says the step high should be less than the agent high and that's so that you can keep between the boundaries because it's really not realistic if you go if you go that high I guess that really depends on the game that you're trying to that you're trying to make okay so I'm just gonna do bake right there and the other thing that I'm gonna do let's go ahead and make these ones a little bit smaller and we can probably just do let's just move them aside just a tiny bit and then hit bake all right so I think I think that works fine and then each one of these are walkable walkable okay let's go ahead and go back to bake and I think that's going to work let me go ahead and do I don't know why it's creating this really interesting mesh but I think it's working I think it's just more of a display thing okay so we have our steps let's actually make them a little bigger let's go ahead and do let's go ahead and do that I think that that works I'm gonna go ahead and do bake again. All right, so we have a step, so that stuff should work. The the other thing that I want to show you is let's go ahead and add a, a different ramp. So this ramp right here, it's gonna be this is our floor. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate it. I'm gonna make it right about that size. It doesn't need to be huge. So what I'm gonna do is I want the character to run to basically jump, and we can probably just put it something like this. I think it works. So he's gonna go from here to here, and then it's going to it's going to rescue the what I what I call the princess in the previous video. So we're just gonna go ahead and put the princess, the the goal right here. Awesome. And then this one is just gonna be again. It's gonna call. I'm gonna call it platform. We can call it. So this one. Let's see. This one was the was a platform and. We can probably just call that a, that a step because it's really that's really not a platform. I'm just gonna call this one a step, and then we can make the steps all the same color. So if I go ahead and look at that, that one was called. Let me go ahead and rename that. This is gonna be a step, and then it's gonna assign those to all the objects that have that same name, so that everything that you're you know you're dealing with matches the same color. And then you know, okay, this is a step. This is a step. I think it's gonna make it easier for you in the long run all right so we have these but we have these you know offset platform that is in the air and we don't how are we going to get there so if i do this right now it's, it's not going to be able to jump and in fact if i hit play i want to show you what happens so it's going to go through the steps and then it's going to go around it's going to find this next step and it's also pretty slow i'm going to increment the velocity and acceleration and we're right there and then we're stuck right we we don't we can't really get to that point so there's a couple of things that we can do here is we can add what's called an off basically it's a link that allow us to to select a source and a target so if i go here what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a new object and this one is going to be a cylinder and i'm not going to put it in the platform i'm just going to put it let's go ahead and put it at the very at the very end let me go ahead and move these down a little bit so I'm gonna put it here. And then this one is just gonna say offset link source. And then we'll do the same thing with the target. I'm just I'm just duplicating those. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select both of them. I'm gonna go into the inspector. And then let me make sure that this is much smaller. So we can probably just do 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and 0 0.5. Or we can do one, I think one and one. Okay, so let's go ahead and just resize it here and I'm going to I'm selecting both of them but I'm gonna put them in the source location first so this is gonna be the source location we're gonna start from right here and that's where our characters is going to is going to go but he needs to know where the target location is going to be so let me go ahead and resize it a little bit more maybe do 0 0.05 I like to keep everything you know the same kind of the same numbers it makes it easier to to troubleshoot and manage 
Okay, and then the other thing that I'm going to do is the target, it's going to be right here. So this is where we're going to be getting to, and we're going to tell the system, okay, yeah, we're going to go from this location and then to this location. So the agent knows that it can jump. Okay, so we have those two, and then let's go ahead and create a new material. So I'm going to go ahead and right click here, create material, and this one could be offset link. And I'm going to assign it to each one of those links. Now we're going to go into the inspector and then ju let's just change the color to something that just comes out a little bit more. We'll do something like that. We can enable the emission so that the colors are a little bit stronger. There we go. We can do something. I think, I think that really stands out. All right. And let me just move this a tiny bit. And we can have them just basically right at that location. I think it's fine. And this can be anything you want. It just needs to be something that, you know, it's easy to see. And I think I'm, I think I'm good with that. I think I'm going to basically resize them just a tiny bit more. Let's go ahead and do, let me do point A, and then I'll do the same thing here, point A. Okay, it, they don't need to be huge. So the, the thing that I need to do now to, to hook them up is I need to tell the system what the source is and what the target is. So I need to create a new component and it's gonna be an off, basically an off mesh link. I'm gonna select it. I'm gonna tell it what the star it's going to be, which is this one. And then what the target is gonna be, which is gonna be N. And then we're gonna say these are walkable. We can also say that they're bi-directional, meaning that the if we had something that was patrolling, could go here and then come back. But for this example, I'm not gonna make it bi-directional. I'm gonna say, okay, if we get here, you're gonna go there and then you're not gonna come back. So you can also see this arrow right here. It basically tells us that we have a link between the nav mesh here and then basically the target. And it basically designates that this is enough mesh link. All right, so we have that. And then the next thing that I need to do is in this platform, if we go into object, I'm making it walkable. So I think that's fine. And I think I have everything that I need. Let me go ahead and do a bake and see how this looks. And now you can see that we have our platform here. We have the blue, meaning that that's the navigation mesh. We have the source and the target. And then let's go ahead and do one more change to the player because I think it's too slow. I'm gonna basically triple the speed. I'm gonna say that the speed is gonna be 15. And then the other thing that I also want to do is I want to change the acceleration because I want to, I want the, the agent to be able to rotate much faster and accelerate as it's rotating. So I'm gonna change the acceleration to something like 500. I'm gonna make it pretty high. And you're going to see the change right away. So if I hit play, let's see what happens. And I think that's too fast. Let me let me go back. And then I think the speed, let's go ahead and make the speed maybe about five. Okay, let's go ahead and hit play. And now the, there we go. So the player is faster. The, basically the acceleration on the rotation is also much faster. The other thing that I want to do, let's go ahead and double the angular speed because that's gonna help us when we go through through basically the curves. And then the acceleration, let's do something like, let's do 350, I think it's, it's still too high. And then another property that I'm gonna use on the aging is gonna be the stopping distance. I'm gonna say stop at two, because I don't want the aging to be right, basically eat the, eat the goal. I want the player to basically be a little bit far from the goal, but at least, you know, no, basically no intersecting with the with the object. So I think that we have, now that we have that, let's go ahead and hit play and see what happens. So we're going up the stairs. We got, you know, better acceleration there on the rotation. We're stopping. It's finding obstacles, going around. It found the, of basically the link. And then we can see that, you know, now we have a, a pretty good distance between the target, which was our goal, because when we went to the player, we set the stopping distance at two. And then we also went a little faster because we changed the speed and also the acceleration. So let's do that one more time, but this time let's make it faster. Let's go ahead and do 10 and see what happens. So now we're going a lot faster. This is going way, way fast. It's finding some obstacle and then it jumps and then it gets to, to the target location. So that's honestly everything that I wanted to show you guys in this video. The last thing that I want to show you before we before we wrap it up, like, like, let's go ahead and watch it as we as we look at it from the camera. I'm also going to adjust the camera before we wrap it up, just so that you can see everything clearly. And we can probably do something like that. Okay, so that's perfect. 
I like to keep things clean so that you guys can see it. Okay, so let's go ahead and hit play and see and see it in the game view. And then I'll show you the GitHub repository that this is going to this is living at. Okay, so everything everything works. So now if we go into into Chrome or your preferred browser, I'm going to go to GitHub and then I have a lot of different repositories here that you can you can test out. The one that I've been working on quite a bit is gonna be the visual effects and also the one for this video, which is the Unity Pathfinding Essentials. So what I've been doing is I've been creating a readme file that gives you basically an overview of what each thing is and also a little gift that shows you the results. I'm gonna be doing the same thing for this video. I'm gonna be adding the new scene and also checking the coding. So make sure that you check it out and then clone it. That way you can test it yourself. And if you guys have, guys have any questions, please let me know in the comments. Thank you. All right, guys, thank you much for watching today. I really appreciate your time. And if you have any questions about anything that I just mentioned, please let me know in the comments. Also, be sure to check out gamedev.net because they have great resources for game developers. And also find me in patreon.com where I'm basically posting what I'm doing behind the scenes and also early access to source code. Thank you very much, guys.